On today's episode, we pay tribute to one of the most influential anglers of the last few decades, Mr. Aaron Martins. We also cover three new lures that just hit the market, and we preview next week's rod review. All that and more on this episode of Tackle Talk. Hello everybody, I'm Bill Dance, and you're listening to Tackle Talk. the Tackle Talk Podcast, brought to you by American Legacy Fishing and Outdoors, world-class fishing gear, unmatched personal service. Now, here's your host, Andrew Hayes. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Tackle Talk Podcast. As always, we are made possible by the kind folks over at American Legacy Fishing and Outdoors. www.americanlegacyfishing.com should be your first stop when you're looking for gear for a couple reasons. You guys have heard me preach this till the cows come home because it's true. You're going to get a great selection. You're going to get the best prices you're going to find anywhere, and you are going to get hands down the best customer service of any company in the fishing industry. Hands down, I will put my name to that. The folks at American Legacy Fishing will take care of you better than anybody else is going to, any big box store, any big tackle company. American Legacy Fishing cares. They're Midwestern folks. They run their company right. They're a small company in Indiana, but they ship all over the United States, and they will get it to you lightning fast. I promise you, I am not exaggerating this. Now, I live in Ohio, so this will be a little bit different. Uh, It might be a day different or two, but uh, I bought something from American Legacy Fishing. I bought a rod that we're going to talk about. We'll hint at today, and then we'll talk more in depth about next week, but I bought this rod at like 4 p.m. on a Thursday, and it was at my door noon on Friday. That is scary. I don't know how it happened. Within 24 hours of that shipping label being printed and me ordering that, it was at my doorstep. Now, again, I'm one state away, but you get the point, right? This stuff is getting there super fast, and they're going to take care of you. So if you're looking for anything from Dobbins, from Shimano, Daiwa, Luz, G. Loomis, any of those companies or more, go check out www.americanlegacyfishing.com and be sure to use code TACKLETALK10. 10, Tackle Talk 10. You know me. You know I'm all about saving you money. The folks at American Legacy Fishing are the same way. We have teamed up, so you now have a code that you can use at any time on anything except a few brands that don't let you discount their brands. You know those brands by now. But pretty much everything else on the website, 10% off your entire order with code Tackle Talk 10. Tackle Talk 10 at checkout. Save 10% on rods, reels, line, lures, anything you need www.americanlegacyfishing.com. All right, this is a tough one today. I had a whole episode planned, and we have to push back some of this and scrap some of this because we just, we can't not talk about the biggest, the saddest news from our sport from this past week, and that is, unfortunately, the passing of professional angler Aaron Martins. Aaron unfortunately lost his 19-month battle with brain cancer at the age of 49. Now, I know most of you know who Aaron Martins is, and rightfully so, but we're going to give him his due credit and his respect, and we are going to recap some of his accomplishments before we get into what he meant to the community and what his legacy will be. So first, Aaron was a three-time Bassmaster Angler of the Year which is the award that is given to the angler who has the most points at the end of the season that's generally looked at as your angler who had the best overall year, the best body of work, kind of the most consistent success is going to be your angler of the year. It is basically the best angler on tour that year is going to be your AOY, and he won that three times in the Bassmaster circuit. So some of the stats straight from Bass. He qualified through the Western Opens back in the day, and he fished the Bassmaster Elite Series or whatever you want to call it for that particular year. I know for some years it was called the, I think, the Top 150 Tour. All the different names that the Bassmaster Elite Series has gone by over the years, he has fished that from 1999 through 2018. So almost 20 years there on the Bassmaster Elite Series or the Bassmaster, I guess, top echelon of the organization, whatever it was called that year, 20 years basically on the Bassmaster Elite Series. In that time, he qualified 
for 20 Bassmaster Classics, so not missing classics. Um, and that is a whole different conversation on how you qualify for those that we'll get to some other time. But just because you're on the Elite Series does not necessarily mean that you are in the Bassmaster Classic. There are other ways to qualify. That's all kind of a weird system. Again, we'll, we'll touch on that at a different time. But he qualified for 20 Bassmaster Classics. Um, like I said, he won Angler of the Year three times in 2004. He finished second in the Bassmaster Classic to Takahiro Mori. Then in 2005, he finished second to Kevin Van Dam. And I mean, that one was a heartbreaker because he basically had that tournament won multiple times. Multiple fish that would have won that tournament got off. Uh, it was just one of those heartbreaking, kind of like Hank Cherry. Uh, what was that, 2013, I think, ish, where you just, you lose that winning fish and it's an absolute heartbreaker. That happened to him multiple times in 2005. So he lost the 2005 Bassmaster Classic to Kevin Van Dam. Then the very next year, he finished second again to Kevin Van Dam in the Bassmaster Classic at Lay Lake. So two straight years, he finished second place to KVD. Three straight years, he finished second in the Bassmaster Classic uh, to somebody. So just right on the cusp of that trophy, just so close, but arguably a tougher feat to finish, you know, neck and neck second three years in a row than to just kind of maybe catch fire in a, in a bottle and win it once. So that just shows you the consistency that Aaron Martins was able to put up three second place finishes in the Bassmaster Classic 2004 through 2006, I believe. And then he also won nine Bassmaster tournaments throughout his career and took home more than $3 million in tournament winnings. So that was on the Bassmaster Elite Series side. He also was a multi-tour angler, so he fished the FLW for about six years from 2001 to 2006, and he qualified for the historic Forestwood Cup three times and won two FLW events. So he won two in the FLW, nine in Bassmaster, just a, a well-rounded angler. And then, like so many others for the last few years, he left to fish the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. So that's... A heck of a resume right there, and it's extremely impressive that you can go on a run where you win nine bass events, two FLW wins, 20 classic appearances, two Forestwood Cup qualifications, over two decades of fishing at the highest level, definitely cements Aaron as one of the greats in the sport. But that's not really why this one hurts so bad. This one hurts bad because by all accounts, Aaron Martins was maybe the nicest, most genuine guy in the sport on tour at any given time. I don't think I have ever heard a single human being on the face of this earth say a negative thing about Aaron Martins. And this is before, obviously, you know, uh, he got sick and, you know, before his passing. This is just like over the past 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, by all accounts, this dude was just as nice as they come by all of these anglers that competed against him. It's it's really evident when you see all these messages coming out, and they all have the exact same sentiment to them. It's not like they're just kind of empty messages of, you know, rest in peace and, and prayers to the family and stuff like that. The stories that people are telling all kind of have this similar pattern to them where he is just going out of his way to be you know, over and beyond the nicest guy that's out there. So I'm sure if you've been within 30 miles of a computer or a phone over the past week, you have seen the flood of just positive posts, stories, firsthand accounts, testimonials to Aaron's character. And I'm talking guys that are like super, super competitive. I'm talking about, you know, people that just don't get emotional, just pouring their hearts out because Aaron uh, was just that nice of a guy and what his family's going through, and he was just that important to folks that they had to take to their you know respective media outlets, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, and kind of tell these stories and shed some light on just what a guy that uh, that Aaron was. I'm talking people like Jason Christie, who is as fierce a competitor as they come, posted a story on his Facebook. It said. Typically, I'm a man of few words, but for Aaron, I have more than a few. The first time I met Aaron, I was competing against him in a tournament in Texas. I rounded a corner and noticed a boat sitting under a bridge. I didn't think anything about it until I looked up again several minutes later, and the boat was still sitting in that same spot. I realized who it was, and of course, I was starstruck. 
I watched him drop his bait down to the bottom 13 consecutive times. Each time he brought the bait up, he pulled a marker out of his pocket and made fine adjustments, and the boat had still not moved. On the 14th drop, he caught a fish and immediately put the marker away and began trolling around, minding his own business. At that moment, I realized how great of an angler he was. The attention to detail was second to none. Aaron and I shared that creek over the next three days. He helped me catch fish. He cheered me on when I caught one and offered to share his lunch with me. It was at that moment I realized how great of a person he was. I competed against him often, but I always looked up to Aaron. We lost one of the absolute best today. My heart goes out to his family. That that kind of stuff is is what you're hearing throughout the community of just people that that had a positive encounter with him and and have to share it. So another one, Kevin Van Dam, who we just talked about, you know, obviously him and Aaron battling it out in the Bassmaster Classics over those years. Uh, Kevin posted, words cannot describe the sadness I have felt since receiving the news yesterday that my friend Aaron Martins passed away after his battle with brain cancer. He was an amazing angler who did things his own way and was incredibly detail-oriented. It was fascinating to talk fishing with him because of his unique thought process and extreme intuition. He was the greatest instinctual angler of my era, aka the natural. As I got to know Aaron more through his 22 years on tour, I saw just how special of a person he was. He was always positive, smiling, bubbly, and willing to help out anyone. He loved his family and always talked about him. He made me a better person, and I know a lot of other anglers would say the same. Everyone loved him. Every time we talked, we'd never finish without telling each other, love you. One thing that stood out during his fight with cancer, giving me a great comfort, was his unwavering faith. He knew God had a plan, and he never questioned it. He just kept fighting. Always positive. Heaven received a special gift and an amazing person with my friend Aaron. Love you, bro. Please pray for Leslie, Jordan, Spencer, and the rest of Aaron's family during this most difficult time. And then our buddy Bill Dance posted, The good Lord received a wonderful gift and fisherman last night when Aaron Martins went home. Aaron was one of the special guys, always had time not only to listen to fishermen, but to share a minute with others about his knowledge of our sport. He was a class act and just a doggone good guy that our industry and all anglers are sure going to miss. Every tackle show, Aaron would see me in a booth with a big smile on his face, head straight to me. He'd say how he was so happy to see me, and I knew he meant it. He was just so happy and genuine and a daggum good guy. Definitely a keeper that's going to be missed. Our family's thoughts and prayers go out to his family. You were one of the best, Aaron. Rest in peace. So they just keep coming. So I'm not going to read any more of these. You guys can go on the internet and you can read hundreds of these. But they, as you heard in those, right, the tributes say the same thing. Whether it's a story about out on the water, whether it's a story about seeing him at a tackle show, Aaron was just one of those guys that would go out of his way to make your experience with him positive and to kind of just promote and and help educate people about the sport. And I think that's what a lot of people are going to miss. Aaron was just one of those infectious guys that sounds like he loved everybody, didn't know a stranger, and would just stop and talk to a brick wall if given the chance. So now we've talked about, obviously, uh, the thoughts from the community about Aaron passing. Let's really quickly, before we wrap this up, talk about Aaron the angler. So Aaron did a lot of power fishing, and he did a lot of it successfully, right? He won a lot of money power fishing, but a lot of people are going to always remember Aaron Martin's as a finesse guy, and he was one of those guys that just had a knack for taking old school lures and making them popular again by having success with them, and then, you know, people seeing it on TV, people seeing it on, uh, you know, the the recaps or social media nowadays or whatever it is, and kind of just reinvigorating these lures. So the three things that I think I'm going to remember Aaron Martins for, and I'm sure a lot of folks are going to remember him for as well, first and foremost, the drop shot. Aaron threw a drop shot probably better than anyone on tour during his day, and he's definitely the reason that so many people have it tied on today. Uh, He had a heavy hand in basically making the drop shot as popular and widespread and accepted from the Great Lakes down to Texas and everywhere in between that it is today. So first and foremost, Aaron Martins was just an absolute wizard with the drop shot. Second, the scrounger head. 
We've talked about that a couple times on the show. Again, a very old school lure, but we've all seen, you know, the Aaron Martin's Picasso signature scrounger heads. Um, that was a prime example of a lure that was very popular 30, 40 years ago that he used, succeeded with, and ultimately brought back to life in the eyes of a bunch of modern anglers. So scrounger head, the reason that that is even, you know, in tackle stores now, probably a big, big part of that is Aaron Martin's kind of just uh, rejuvenating that and kind of bringing the scrounger back to life. And then third, the underspin. Same story as the scrounger, right? The underspin was a very old lure that Aaron tossed, had a lot of success with, spread it. I have underspins uh, that I use out on the river for smallmouth that I probably wouldn't have in my box if Aaron hadn't popularized again for a whole new generation, right? It wouldn't have spread to me if Aaron hadn't spread it to you know, kind of the folks that were between me and Aaron in terms of a generational gap. So that kind of stuff, really, the drop shot, the scrounger head, the underspin, Aaron Martins is going to be remembered for for a long, long time as those lures continue to be found in people's tackle boxes. So again, please keep the Martins family in your prayers. He leaves behind a wife, two kids. I can't imagine what they're going through. Cancer sucks. You know, we we hope for recovery, and he looked he was given it the good fight. It doesn't make it any easier to say goodbye to somebody like Aaron Martin. So um, please keep them in your thoughts and prayers as we say goodbye to one of the greatest in our sports history, Mr. Aaron Martins. Poo. Okay, going to be a tough transition to make, but we're going to try and power through this. Uh, we're going from that to a quick message from Dark Horse Tackle. Now. November boxes have shipped. They are shipping today, I believe. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, your November box should be coming, and that is the Tackle Talk Takeover box. That is a mouthful, a lot of T's. Uh, but the Tackle Talk Takeover box is shipping today. I'm very excited for you guys to get to open these, to get some gear in your hands. It's going to help for cold weather. I won't spoil it. I'm not going to tell you what you're going to find in this box, but uh, over the next week to two weeks, we will recap uh, what's in the box and kind of why I chose that and we'll tie that into an episode so that you guys can see kind of you know why I use what I use out when it's super cold out and why some of these lures might be obvious choices and why some of them might not be so obvious but the way you can use them to be effective in cold water so we will talk about that um, but if you are interested in getting the best baits shipped right to your door each and every month from some of the coolest small bait makers in the country I encourage you to go check out www.darkhorsetackle.com. Click subscribe and you'll see the different options there. Choose the one that's right for you. But at the end, right before you check out, use code TACKLETALK30. TACKLETALK30 at checkout and you're going to save 30% off your first month's box just for listening to the show. We're going to pass that savings along to you guys so you guys save a little bit of money on your first box. www.darkhorsetackle.com and use code TACKLETALK30. All right. Uh, A couple other real little housekeeping things here. I am excited to announce that I have officially placed the order for hats. So we are getting Tackle Talk embroidered hats. They're going to be a snapback. Uh, They're very nice hats. I have basically been waiting for these certain hats to come back in stock, and they are supposed to come back in stock in the next week to two weeks. So I placed my order. There will be a limited number of Tackle Talk snapback hats that we will be selling. They'll be on the website. I'm in the process of getting the website uh, up and ready to go. So it will take payments and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to do any sort of weird like, you know, message me or Venmo or whatever. I'm going to do it on the website site so it'll be legit but I'm going to put together a package where you guys are going to get a hat Um, you'll get a a couple vinyl stickers I'm getting some really nice vinyl stickers made Um, not the ones that I've been shipping out for the reviews we'll actually get some different ones here Um, but some vinyl circle stickers Um, you know there'll be some all some stuff that we'll put together in a package for you guys um, cost effective to purchase on the website so we're going to get some tackle talk gear in your hands baby steps but I wanted to make sure that I got a good hat and a hat that I like and not just some random cheap like two dollar hat and stitch our logo on that I didn't want to do that so um, those are in the works so I appreciate you guys being patient those will be coming uh, and we'll be making some announcement on that here in the next couple weeks Um, also I have a new rod that I just received uh, over the past week and you guys if you follow me on Instagram you probably saw that I had a big rod tube sitting for me when I got back from Florida and uh, it's gonna be a fun one to review because it's not the normal uh, it's not the rods that I've been using before I branched out and I tried something completely different um, for good reason so it is not a Dobbins it is uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is yet but it is a very 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 well-known 
rod company that came out with a new line of rods that kind of break the mold for that certain company, and uh, I wanted to try this certain rod. So I bought one, and I have went out and fished with it, and I am still kind of making up my mind on how I want to do this review because it is, it's a weird one. So we are going to review that. Hopefully that'll help some of you guys out. I know some of you guys are looking for the same thing that I was looking for that led me to purchase this rod. Uh, Again, I know this is kind of cryptic, but uh, it'll make sense next week. Uh, So we will get to that. We will have a brand new rod review next week on the episode. But this week, we have three new lures that have hit the market that I want to at least touch on because they're all kind of interesting in their own way. So... Uh, One of these is, I think, probably going to play pretty well and going to end up being something that sticks around. One of these is just really kind of weird and off the wall, and one of them is just pure fishing industry. Here's something brand new and innovative, and it's pretty much the same old, same old. So uh, kind of a reason to talk about all three of these lures. So the very first thing that came out is the 10,000 fish Zuki bug? Z-U-C-H-I. I'm assuming that's a Zuki bug. Now, 10,000 Fish is the company that owns Catch Company, that owns Mystery Tackle Box, that whole conglomerate of brands over there. And 10,000 Fish, no matter how you feel about them or kind of the umbrella that they're under, they do put out some, I guess, different looking stuff. Uh, Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But the knock um, on 10,000 fish a lot of times is that that and that whole family of companies and brands a lot of times that umbrella is marketed to a lot younger demographic, which isn't necessarily good or bad. It's just a matter of personal preference and personal taste. But uh, when you look at 10,000 fish and you look at catch company and things like that, a lot of those lures are going to be flashy. They're going to have weird names. They're going to be playing off of what's trendy, um, the packaging, the marketing, all that kind of stuff definitely directed to a younger demographic. And again, some people love that. Some people are going to gripe at that. I'm not here to make heads or tails of that. I'm just here to tell you about a new product that's hitting the market, and that is the Zuki bug. And it definitely falls into that category of weird, uh, kind of trendy, again, probably a younger crowd going to purchase this. But it's it's a soft plastic bait, and it looks like a demon, it looks like a an angel of death or something like that. Really, really, really weird soft plastic. It has appendages all over the place, a big tail, two big claw kickers, like seven or eight little offshoot frills on either side of it. It really, honest to God, looks like an evil brush hog. If, I don't know, Harley Davidson or Affliction or someone like that made a brush hog, this is it. That's what you're getting. So a very, very weird bait. I can see this playing again in dirty water, anywhere where you're, you know, th- want a lot of motion and you want a bigger bait. It is five inches long, so it's not a small bait. They are five ninety nine for a six pack. They come in eleven colors, and that is the ten thousand fish Zuki bug. Next, we have the Z Man Big Blade Chatter Bait. Uh, Now, this is a family show, so I'm not going to make the joke about the name that is definitely the low-hanging fruit there, but Big Blade Chatterbait. You guys figure it out. Not going to do it. I'm going to restrain myself. But the bait itself is a regular chatterbait with bingo, a bigger blade. Yep, but just real, real, real big brain stuff here. But this is one of the baits where I honest to goodness think that this change might end up being a something that has staying power. I know it's a big cop-out to just put a bigger blade on a chatterbait and call it something new, but if you look at chatterbaits as what would probably be their closest relative, which would be a spinnerbait, you're probably looking at now kind of the difference that we have with spinnerbaits with chatterbaits. So with the spinnerbait, you know, you've got the kind of smaller, more subtle spinnerbaits, which are usually your willow blade or your double willow blade spinnerbaits, those small, thinner blades on there. They do still put out motion. They still displace water, but not as much as the other iteration of a spinnerbait, which is more of like a Colorado blade. Bigger blade, more thump, more water displacement, better for, usually, in my case, I'm using those for dirty water, for cold water sometimes, the the bigger blades, those Colorado blades seem to work better, Um, and then also in low light conditions or at night, so really when 
you're trying to make that bait easier for a fish to find and track down. Um, so again, that could be in heavy vegetation. That could be, again, dirty water. It could be because you're fishing at night or you just don't feel confident that those fish are able to find that lure and you want to make it easier to hunt. You're going with a bigger blade. So it might make sense that this becomes just kind of a duh. Yeah, you have the smaller blade or the big blade, just like you have double willow or you have Colorado blades on a spinnerbait. So I don't know. I'm going to use this. We're going to find out. I could also see it going the opposite way where this just takes away the appeal of a chatterbait, which is a more streamlined I guess spinnerbait, right? A more streamlined single hook bait that is a little bit more weedless and a little bit more less snaggy, but still has that chop, still has that kind of throwing water around and easy to find and that shine and that glimmer, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So I, I can see it going both ways. I can see maybe it being too much and it's not as effective as a regular chatterbait, or I could see this just becoming, you know, the, the other option, right? Are you using a regular blade or a big blade chatterbait? So that kind of stuff. I don't know. I mean, I'm anxious to see it, but the big blade chatterbait, uh, features a six aught hook oversized blade for 1199. And last today we have the snag proof, Bobby's Perfect Frog. Now, when I read the first sentence of this frog's description, it caught my eye and I had to keep reading. It claims that this frog is fully redesigned um, because it looks like a regular old frog. So I had to keep going, right? What is fully redesigned about this frog? Well, here is the description straight from the company. Fully redesigned to enhance its appearance and performance alike, the snag-proof Bobby's Perfect Frog features well-thought-out updates that will bring more of those heart-palpitating blow-ups to the end of your line. Constructed with a meticulously researched and tested keel, Bobby's Perfect Frog walks on open water like a dream with aggressive side-to-side -side action, yet comes through vegetation with exceptional ease. Built with a new injection process, each Bobby's Perfect Frog is made with a consistent shape and super soft hollow body so they collapse easily to expose razor sharp hooks. Perhaps the most important upgrade, it now features a fully machine welded line tie that eliminates any gaps that previously existed so anglers can set the hook with confidence knowing there's no chance their slick braided line is slipping. To keep the snag-proof Bobby's Perfect Frog in the optimal heads-up position that allows it to jump into action with the first twitch of your rod, it's been re-engineered with a molded rear button weight that will never fall out. Taking its performance a leap further, an innovative water evacuation system naturally expels any water infiltration during a cast for unbeatable buoyancy and consistent performance. Boasting custom paint schemes designed and created by award-winning lure designer Andrew Gardner, the snag-proof Bobby's Perfect Frog delivers unbelievably good looks that equally match its peerless performance. So that sounds like a whole bunch of gobbledygook. That is marketing 101. That is just putting a fluff on the description there for a hollow body frog. So by fully redesigned, it means that it walks as any good frog probably should. It comes through vegetation with ease. Duh. It is made with a consistent shape and super soft hollow body so it collapses to expose the hooks. Yeah. That's what a frog does, right? And then most importantly, it has a machine welded line tie, so it basically just doesn't have that gap that your line would fall out of. Again, as I'm hoping most frogs do not have a gap that your line is coming out of. That is your just your your mold breaking lure right there for your frog. Now I don't want to to absolutely dump on this frog because I don't know, right? I've never actually held one, but just reading that, me being the skeptic that I am, me knowing how the industry works sometimes, that sounds like a whole bunch of mush mouth and a very, very uh, sexy way to say this is a hollow body frog from a different company. Um, so again, th the thing I want to hint at with this is that you're going to see this all over the place in fishing. You're going to see people call lures revolutionary, call them game changing, call them fully redesigned in this case, but they're just the same dang thing with a shinier package and some fancier descriptions. Every single thing they listed is a feature on this frog 
all frogs should have. They should all come through vegetation. They should all collapse to expose the hooks. You know, they should all have a line tie that your line is not going to come through, right? All of that stuff should be a given with a hollow body frog. So I'm probably going to buy one of these because I feel bad just absolutely taking a dump on this frog without using it. So I'm going to buy one. I'm going to use it. I will report back. But unfortunately, I have a feeling when I report back, my report is going to be, yeah, it's a hollow body frog. (laughs) Uh, okay that is today's episode today thank you guys so much for listening i appreciate you guys Um, again keep the martins family in your prayers i hope you guys are going to enjoy the dark horse tackle boxes that you guys are going to get this month Uh, if any of those three lures interest you check them out be on the lookout for hats that will be coming out soon and as always if you want to leave us a review on apple Podcasts, we'd appreciate that Uh, if you want to subscribe on apple spotify iheart wherever you listen next week we have a brand new rod review coming your way and we will see you same time same place next week for a brand new episode of tackle talk Thank you for listening to the Tackle Talk Podcast. Tackle Talk is produced by Andrew Hayes. Copyright 2021. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 